Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us introduce ourselves to what are called classes. So, this is something that we have learnt already that a set of elements is called a group if and only if they satisfy these four properties closure, presence of identity element, associativity and reciprocity. Right? Is commutativity an essential criterion? No. If commutativity holds then we call it an abelian group and what we learnt yesterday is that cyclic groups are always abelian groups. What is a cyclic group? A cyclic group is like this. Let us say element A is something x, then B is x square, C is x cube and so on and so forth. We are going to look at an example of an actual cyclic group a little later today. Okay. And this is something that we have discussed also group multiplication tables. We have said that a group multiplication table of a group of H1 is trivial, a group of H1 itself is trivial, like a very lonesome man, right, as a group by himself. Group of 2, a little more interesting, E and A, that is very easy. Group of 3, E, A, B, we found that it is a cyclic group and it is an abelian group. Okay. What would be an example from our point groups of uh, a cyclic group of order 3? C3, C3, C3 square and E equal to C3 cube. Okay. So, the point is if you work out the multiplication table of C3, replace A by C3 and B by C3 square, then you are going to get a multiplication table that looks like this this will be C3, this will be C3 square, this will be C3, C3 square, C3 square, C3. That then would be the multiplication table of something like C3, alright. And we have talked about something like uh, something called uh, rearrangement theorem. So, what rearrangement theorem tells us is that in a given row or in a given column, the same element will not be repeated twice. Right? So, every row and every column is really a rearrangement of the uh, possibilities okay? and that is what helps us build the group uh, multiplication table in the first place. Without rearrangement theorem, we cannot really build the group multiplication table. All right? Now, I think we had stopped here yesterday, h equal to 4. Let us now do a little bit of Sudoku and work out the group multiplication table of h equal to 4. For your benefit, I have written the first row and the first column. So, the pillars are there, you need to do the brick work. How do you do the brick work? Before you proceed, let me tell you there are two possibilities. One possibility is that it is a cyclic group and the other possibility is that it is not a cyclic group. Right? Somehow, I do not know really why but I went with in the reverse order compared to what is there in Cotton's book and since Cotton is not teaching the class I am, we will go by my order and it does not matter which one is 1, which one is 2. So, let us say that case 1 is the case where every element is its own inverse. Will that work? Will that not work? We will see. Is it possible to construct a multiplication table using A equal to A inverse, B equal to B inverse? C equal to C inverse, let us see. So, let us fill it in. Where will I write the E's then? Diagonally. Diagonally. Diagonal elements are all E, right? And uh, just to remember that we are working with group number 1, I call it G41, okay? G4, then superscript 1 in bracket. So, these will be the E's, right? Now, now, let us uh, try to fill in. See, 
Would you agree with me if I write C here? Why? Because in the group you have A already. So your options are B and C, but you cannot write B because B is there in the column. So there is no option but to write C. So what will be this element here? B. B is the only one that is missing. A is C B. Next, uh, we can go with this or this. Here, the since the last column has only one vacancy, it is easier to fill in. What will it be? A. A. Very simple. So now, once again, in the third row, only one vacancy is there. What will it be? C. C. So now, what will the other two elements be? Simple. So we have been able to construct a group multiplication table considering that each element is an inverse of itself. All right. So it has worked out. Is this a cyclic group? Yes or no? I do not think it is a cyclic group. Let us now uh, try to work out the character table for a cyclic group if it is possible. What is the definition of cyclic group? A equal to x, b equal to x square, c equal to x cube and e will be equal to x to the power 4. Okay. Uh, what would be an example? C4 once again. Fine. So now knowing this, we can fill it in. What is the inverse of what? What is the inverse of x? A. If it is a cyclic group, A equal to x, B equal to x square, C equal to x cube and E equal to x to the power 4. Then what is the inverse of A? C. C. And what is the inverse of C? A. Better be A. What is the inverse of B? There is no other choice and besides if you look at this x square into x square is x to the power 4 which is e. Right? So a equal to c inverse, c equal to a inverse and b is the inverse of itself. All right? So now can we fill in? Where will the e's be? This will be the e's, will a is c inverse and c is a inverse. So c a and a c will be e and b b b square should also be e right and now see it is very easy to fill in you do not really need uh, rearrangement theorem anymore because I have imposed an additional condition that it is a cyclic group. Okay. So you can work out yourself. So this what is this? Well, what will this be? A square? A square will be? x square that is b. What is b a? Oh, you could have filled that using the arrangement theorem also, is not it? What do I call this? Do I call this b a or a b? This element here, do I call this b a or a b? You could call it anything, right? but the convention is that top first, side next. Okay, the name of the column first, the name of the row after that. All right, please uh, don't get confused here. Eventually, you can build everything in whatever convention you want, but then if all of us go around building our own conventions, then we are going to create a Tower of Babel. You know, Tower of Babel. What was the Tower of Babel? Who knows the story? Okay, Prabhu knows. Mayak, what is the Tower of Babel? Babel is a place, right? <laughs> so there the people decided to build a tower which would be so tall that it would reach the heavens. Kind of like the stairs, stairs that Ravan apparently tried to build. So now when this was being built, those higher above saw that it is a very problematic issue man is going to reach the heaven. So to prevent that, God created languages. So everybody has started speaking a different language, Hebrew, Spanish, Hindi, Italian, Zulu, Ubuntu <laughs> and nobody understood uh, what the other guy was saying. So that is the Tower of Babel is synonymous with 
a situation where everybody speaks a different language and nobody understands anything. Okay, so, we do not want to do that. So, let us go by uniform convention top first side second. Okay. So, this is B A. Let us come back to this what will this be? What is A B? Well, you have worked out B A already right and this is an abelian group. So, if you know what A B is going to be it is C. What about C V? A A B. Okay. So, we have constructed character tables for H equal to 4 for two different situations. One in which each element is the inverse of itself and the other in which you have a cyclic group. There is no other possibility. There is no other possibility because you see you have already provided for uh, uh, whatever could have been done. Here everything is uh, inverse of itself. Here one is the inverse of the other and the third chap is left out it has to be the inverse of itself. Now, the only other possibility that you can think of perhaps is A equal to B inverse, but that is trivial right that is just you know using a different name and A, B, C are perfectly arbitrary levels at this point. Saying A equal to C inverse, B equal to B inverse or saying A equal to B inverse, C equal to C inverse mean the same right there is no difference. So, these are the only two possibilities for H equal to 4. Okay. Satisfied? So, now what you could do is you could go on playing this Sudoku and you could go on uh, working out the multiplication tables of H equal to 5, 6, 7 and I will encourage you to work out at least 5, 6, 7 at least these 3 because those who have taken my class know that I have this penchant for asking questions of the next step things that I do not teach right. So, maybe in the, the mid sem I will ask you to work out the character table of h equal to 16. No, I would not do that <laughs> h equal to 16 will be kind of taking things a bit too far, but 5, 6, 7 is ok all right. So, please work this out by yourself when you have nothing else to do in any case it is fun right. People do Sudoku to pass time you do this kind of Sudoku what is the problem all right fine. So, now let us do something let us take examples of uh, actual point groups there is eventually that is what we want to do right. So, let us take two example one a cyclic group and the other I do not know whether I should call it an acyclic group and another group which is not cyclic yeah. So, C 4 to start with you wanted C 4 C 4 E C 4 C 4 square C 4 cube. Actually, I had color coded the whole thing, but then I had goofed up. So, the, the color is all gone. Anyway, can you fill this in without looking at here? What is it going to be? What is it likely to be? G41 or G42? It is a cyclic group. Cyclic group is G42 by my convention. In Cotton's book, it is given as G41. They have handled the cyclic group first, but here as far as this uh, slide is concerned it is G 4 2. Okay. Let us see if we get there or not. What will be the first row first column very easy right work out the second row C 4 C 4 is C 4 square C 4 square C 4 is C 4 cube what is C 4 cube the last one okay. C 4 cube C 4 is E right and similarly you can work out the second column also C 4 C 4 square C 4 cube C 4 C 4 cube E all right. What will be this element here C 4 square C 4 square E and C 4 cube C 4 square C 4 right C 4 cube C 4 square would be C 4 to the power 5 that is C 4 to the power 4 multiplied by C 4 C 4 to the power 4 is E like 1. So, you get C 4. Right. Oh, we are done. What is left? Only one element, and you don't even have to work it out. Yeah, C4 square. So now see, does it match G4 two or not? So that's like A, the green ones. This is green, right? Okay. Now, the blue ones are like B. Look at the pattern in G4 two. 
and orange ones are like C, right? So we have got G42. We were expecting G42. We have got G42 using an actual example of a point group. All right. So uh, these two are not completely divorced from each other. They are one and the same. It's just that one is abstract, and the other is uh, something that is constructed using symmetry operations. All right. Let's take another example. Four elements. Uh, can you think of another point group which has four uh, operations? Yes, good old C2V. Right? We lose no chance of drawing the structure of water molecule. Right? So let's see. And for your uh, benefit, what I've done is here the color code is okay. Huh? Uh, so I have already written the first row and the first column and the E's. Just check, is this okay? E, e C two C two is E. What is the situation here? Every element, every operation is its own inverse, isn't it? C two is its own inverse. Sigma v is its own inverse. Sigma v dash is its own inverse. So the E's are going to be along the diagonal. Like G41. Got it? Okay. Now, can we fill this in? Sigma V C2, what will it be? Sigma V G2, uh, C2. No, do not cheat. Do not look at uh, G41. Only think what will happen. What are my options? Sigma V C2. Sigma V means what? Deflection on the molecular plane, right? And then you apply a C2. So, what will happen? HA and HB will interchange places. Now, my problem is this when HA and HA and HB interchange places for two operations, not one. One is C2 and the other is sigma V dashed. Okay. So, when I apply sigma V and E, sorry, sigma V and then C2 or C2 and sigma v does not matter. What should I write? Should I write sigma v dash or should I write C2? Why? What is identity relationship? Where is E? Sigma v C2. I am talking about sigma v C2, successive operations of sigma v C2 or C2 and sigma v does not matter. All right. So, see this H1, H2, H3, H4, these are all uh, just mathematics, right? And we are trying to apply them to chemical systems. So, the logic from mathematics and logic from chemistry should match. So, let us think of the logic from chemistry or logic of turning things, that is all. So, what happens when I apply sigma v dashed? So, what we said is that sigma v dashed as well as C2 cause an interchange between uh, HA and HB, right? But still, now if you look at it from, uh, if, you are, if you really nitpick, what you see is that their effects are not exactly the same. So, as Okoprobo was saying, if you apply sigma v dashed, what happens? HA and HB interchange, right? But the upper lobe remains the upper lobe, is not it? When you apply sigma v dashed, this is the upper lobe of HA, this is the upper lobe of HB. Upper lobe remains upper lobe, it is a deflection, right? Right? However, when you apply C2, then what happens? Upper lobe becomes lower lobe, is not it? Not only do A and B change places, the upper lobe becomes the lower lobe. So, sigma V dash and C2 are distinct operations. If you have some way of, of painting the upper lobe pink and the painting the lower lobe blue, then you will see that uh, their operations are different, their effects are different. All right. Keeping that in mind, now can you tell me what will it be? Forget about uh, the rearrangement theorem for the time being. Keeping just this upper lobe, lower lobe in mind, can you tell me what this should be? When you apply sigma v, what happens? 
nothing happens is that right nothing happens no there is no ch change in position of the atoms but upper lobes become lower lobes isn't it the lobe that was on top of the molecular plane goes below the lobe that was below the molecular plane goes on top right h remains h h remains h but upper lobe lower lobe interchange is there then when we apply c2 then what will happen first of all h a h b will interchange and upper lobe and lower lobe will also interchange so what will you get what is the net effect net effect is sigma v dash isn't it a b have interchanged but since upper lobe and lower lobe have interchanged twice they are reset so this is sigma v dash and not c2 not using rearrangement theorem but just by thinking of the structure of the molecule and turning it around we can convince ourselves that sigma v dash is what should be there not c2 all right okay the reason why i am spending so much time here is that it is very easy to use the rearrangement theorem but then uh, the two logics are not reconciled the two ways of thinking are not reconciled okay now they are are you okay so far can move ahead now i think you yeah what do you think yes sigma v dash c2 is sigma v similarly and then you can fill them in all right and now you match the colors don't you have you not reproduced the character table of g41 right so this is an example of g41 c2v and c4 is an example of the cyclic group g42 okay right so math and science are going uh, math and chemistry are going hand in hand so far no conflict so far good let's move ahead <clears throat> 